Hi, this is Deborah Baker with Trusted CISO. And today I'm going to be talking about NIST 863B, which is a new password standard. Now, essentially, NIST 863B is a new password standard that covers all sorts of things with passwords and user authentication. It's not exactly new. It's been around a few years, but companies are still just beginning to start implementing it. And you'll see what I mean as I go through this. So what it says is, is that you, your password should be a minimum of eight characters. Well, they really need to be at least a minimum of 15 characters. And if you watch my multi-factor authentication video, you'll understand why. An eight character password can be hacked instantly now in, in 2023. So you definitely do not want an eight character password. I would say minimum of 12 characters, but really 15. And again, go check out my other video. So it recommends no complexity. So that means you don't need uppercase, lowercase, special characters, numbers, because what they found is typically people will just substitute like O with zero or add an exclamation at the end. And then it also makes it harder to remember the password. So what they want you to do is have a longer password. So essentially a passphrase. So what you can do is come up with a sentence and actually you can actually have spaces in your password. So an example would be, I love country music. And you could do some um, substitution. You could add, you know, an exclamation somewhere or, or substitute an O for a zero. Just don't do a lot because it will, it will be harder to remember. But longer is definitely stronger. So you can just remember that. Now, of course, you need to be using multi-factor authentication. And so that's recommended. And then no expiration of the password, which is kind of surprising. But you'll understand as we go through these slides. So for password validation, your applications need to permit up to 64 character passwords. You do not want to truncate them. And what you want to do, this is why you don't have to force the password reset, is that you are going to check that the password they're entering has not been compromised. And you can do that by using the Have I Been Pond API. And you can also go to that website and just put your password in to check to see if it's been compromised. Now for good, you know, strong passwords, so, Continuing on on the password validation, you want to allow for Unicode characters. Each Unicode character counts as a single character. You want to normalize the Unicode characters before you hash them. Now for one-time use passwords, for example, if it's like an initial account login and you're generating the password, it needs to be a minimum of six characters and ensure that you're using an approved random bit generator. Now, more about the password validation, do not store hints. So you don't want it to um, ask questions like, what city were you born? What's the name of your first pet? So they do not recommend this. When you're processing the passwords, you want to ensure that they haven't been compromised. So that's where you use the Have I Been Pond API. Make sure it's not a dictionary word. There's not repetitive characters and they're not using parts of their username or a previous password. Now to prevent rate limiting, you want to limit the number of failed login attempts. So after, you know, five attempts or even 10 PCI lets it go up to 10, then you want to lock them out. And it could be for five minutes or it could be for 20 or 30 minutes. I was, I checked PCI and it said 30 minutes. 
So, you know, you can keep in mind whatever compliance standard that you're trying to meet. Now, you want to use TLS version 1.2 or above and disable TLS version 1.1 and below. Those are required. These are suggested. Use CAPTCHA, make the user wait following a failed login attempt, accept requests only from whitelisted IPs, use geolocation and timings, which this has to do with passwordless and zero trust, and we'll talk more about this in another video. Permit the pasting of passwords. That way you can use, you know, Bitwarden as a password manager or 1Password or LastPass and offer an option to view the password. Now to securely store the passwords, you don't actually want to store the passwords. So what's going to happen is you're going to take the input, the password, you're going to salt it. And what that means is it's going to add random data to it append the random data and then it's going to run it through a hash function and you're going to store the hash of this password that's been salted and what's recommended for this is if you need to meet FIPS 140 then you use pbkdf2 the NIST standard also talks about balloon but if you go over to OWASP they talk about argon 2ID so that's what I recommend using and there's also scrypt and bcrypt and you can read up more on those but argon 2ID is the one that you want to be using now <clears throat> unless you have to meet FIPS 140 thanks again so thank you so much for watching remember to like subscribe and hit the notification bell.